Um, hmm. <clears throat> Which time? I know <laughs> that, uh, um, and that goes back. Now, just let me just tell you beforehand. I saw Ted DiBiase. That was where it all started. My dad broke his arm over that one um, because I was I was outside. Ted and I were like, okay, um, I was 21 or something. He's 22, and I was like, I'm in love, and this is it. And my dad's standing up there on top. We had like three stairs. It was a big uh, colonial house, and they had big big columns. I'm Ted and I are down stairs. He's up there, and he. And we told him that, and he stood there for a minute, and all of a sudden he took his right hand and he swung it into that post. Oh, my God. Oh, God. <laughs> no, God. Anyway, um, daughter is going to be hooked up with a wrestler. I will. And he broke his arm doing that. And, uh, but nobody got hurt except Dad. But there was a story about that. Then Brian, and he loved Brian, and there was a, but there was a, a respect that came um, with that because of who Brian was and, and not to take anything away from Ted at all, um, except that um, Ted was more of a heavyweight, and my dad really had a um, uh, uh, soft heart for Brian because of who had trained him and that he was very, you know, the Briscoes were, were part of my dad's uh, discovery out of OSU, and um, Brian was there uh, with them, but he was trained by a Japanese fellow that was uh, terrific, and it was Hiro Matsuda. Yeah, and yeah. oh yeah, and so there oh, is the tie-in. And I can tell you a story about Matsuda. And I knew I knew him when he first came over from Japan, and my dad had him here. And I remember, you know, this is how I know how the wrestling business and the guys used to be because he was car- he used to carry around a um, a box of milk bones, dog bones, you know, milk bones. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, well, he was told that if he eats that, it's good for his bones and it's going to make him stronger. And <laughs> I, mean, they, uh, I, that, and I remember as a little kid, I'm like, yeah. but that's dog bones, Daddy. And, you know, and my mom would go, shh, just, just, just leave it alone, leave it alone. Right. So, yeah, I, I saw how things were in the business early on and was told that, um, just remember, kid, if they don't tease you, they don't like you. So maybe I have a lot of friends that I didn't know about because they teased me. But Brian, um, it is, there was a struggle, um, and um, the gun came out after the struggle. I, there might have, there was something that happened um, about, and my, my mom and dad, I was the only kid. And when they were trying to make decisions or something, they always, you know, come on, kid, we're, and we would drive. We would drive, and, and my mom would drive, and we'd discuss it. Or that they thought I wasn't happy or something. And um, anyway, that my dad happened to say something, and he said, well, she's my goddamn daughter. And the next thing I know, Brian's coming out, and it, we had a porch. It was up at a ranch, and it was um, a, a big porch with um, uh, it had crosses, and you had your, your timber up and timber down, but they were crosses. Mm-hmm. They broke through those things. I don't, I, Jesus, my yeah. dad, I'm looking, I go, there's my dad, and there's my, I don't know if I, if I was engaged or if we were married yet, and my mom and I are sitting there, and they're rolling on the ground, and it's like, oh, Jesus, oh, God. Well, Brian got up, and, and um, he, was, he was good, but he, 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 he stopped, because it was going too far, but I'm telling you, my dad, I, for a blind man, I mean, once he knows where you were, um, <laughs> he was not a blind man. He, God, he, and that's, I, oh my God, I can tell you he had, and it, I, I've heard that, that if you lose a sense like that, that the others are so much more perceptive and yeah. he could hear pins drop and he would know where you were at. He would follow your voice. You know, um, um, if you were sitting on the couch and there were two or three people, he could absolutely point you out and look, you know, look at each one. Um, so anyway, that was a, a time that I think we didn't know Alzheimer's was beginning, but, um, and I, and to the struggle that, um, that it, and it was a hard time because there was a struggle between he and, and Bill Watts and a territory yeah. that my dad, this was his, and he didn't want to retire, but right. um, his ideas and things didn't go along with what Bill wanted. So we put everything into Brian. And 
you know, he was just too young. We were both too young to uh, really handle running this business and trying to run opposition yeah. towards Bill. This was still, this is 78 now, so we, we're not even, we're not, we're not even, fine. Vince McMahon's not even in the picture, and, and besides, yeah. Senior was still alive, but um, they decided to split, and my dad took Oklahoma, and Bill took Louisiana, and um, so here I was with Brian, so we're trying to be married or trying to get into that. We're also running his ranch, and Brian's heart was still in the wrestling business. He wanted to be a wrestler, but the pressure of him being like Dad's right-hand man or what they call a booker calling the matches was too much. Brian knew, and as he saw, he the boys treated him different. Mm-hmm. And they would, you know, because, well, we were married to Leroy's daughter, yada, yada, yada. And Brian didn't like that kind of pressure. And uh, I, don't, I don't blame him. 